Hi, my name is Dr. Bashir Hanif. Today, I think I'm going to help you out to see if any one of you has any problems related to your heart. So, I'll try to help you today on that. Welcome to Heartbeat, a day in the life of an interventional cardiologist. In this compelling documentary, we follow Dr. Bashir, a renowned interventional cardiologist at a leading metropolitan hospital, as he navigates the intricate and demanding world of cardiovascular medicine. Can you walk us through a typical day in the life of an interventional cardiologist, from patient consultations to performing catheterization procedures in the lab? I guess again, an interventional cardiologist does not only perform the interventional like procedures only, they do other things also. And uh, they see the patients in clinics and uh, um, in the cath lab, obviously, they have uh, particular days when they do the procedures. For example, for myself, I have days divided like maybe twice a day I'm in the cath lab all day doing the procedures and rest of the days I do the clinics uh, I do the administrative work I try to do some kind of a academic or research work or teaching uh, activities so there are different things but uh, I think uh, um, for for example for myself I can tell you if I come like to, uh, yesterday was my day in the cath lab I started at 8 o'clock in the morning in the cath lab and uh, then I have several procedures um, from starting from coronary to carotid and uh, sometimes I have structural procedures also. So I perform the procedures then obviously you have to consult the patient before and the family before the procedure, after the procedure, perform the procedure and then go back and tell them. And in between the cases obviously you sometimes end up seeing the patients also. Uh, or do some uh, other work by the time the next patient gets ready. But uh, again, it, it really depends on how busy you are. Uh, if you have two uh, procedures in the cath lab, you may be done early, but if you have like mm, five or six procedures in the cath lab, sometime it may take uh, all day. It really depends. If, uh, one intervention may take only half an hour, another intervention may take three or four hours. So, um, it really the day varies depending on how many cases or how complex cases you have in the cath lab. What are the most common types of heart conditions that you encounter in your practice? And how do you approach diagnosing and treating them using interventional techniques? I think uh, obviously there are, uh, depending on where you practice, there are different uh, kind of diseases you see. Uh, the most common as a cardiologist, uh, you end up seeing obviously coronary disease or blockages in the arteries of the heart. And uh, for that matter, you um, either seeing patients with angina, patients with shortness of breath due to heart failure or patients with high blood pressure. Sometimes you see uh, patients with peripheral vascular disease. So those are the common diseases you end up seeing and obviously you try to manage them medically and if the medication doesn't work then you proceed with the invasive workup or non-invasive workup to diagnose the condition. Once the condition is diagnosed then you start the treatment and see if the medication will work. If that doesn't work, then the next step is coronary angiography or angioplasty or surgery. So it really, uh, those are the common diseases you see. Um, but obviously there are uncommon diseases like patients come up with a uh, hole in the heart or they have a high pressure in the pulmonary arteries uh, or uh, as I said, different types of uh, uh, cardiomyopathies with uh, uh, heart failure or um, high blood pressure and those are the common things we see and basically uh, treat uh, on a daily basis. Can you share a memorable patient story that highlights the impact of interventional cardiology on improving outcomes and quality of life? I think in interventional cardiology, uh, the most important thing, uh, uh, most of the time we are improving the quality of life. If a patient comes in with um, chest pain or angina, which we call it from the heart, and he tells me that he's not able to walk because he walks few steps, he starts getting chest pain and he has to sit uh, and um, uh, not, not able to do what he wants to do. Then obviously if I do an intervention or his artery is blocked and I open it up, his overall symptoms will improve, his quality of life will be improved, he'll be able to walk. 
but the most important i think impact as an international cardiologist um we make is when a patient come with a heart attack and a patient is having a heart attack and his artery is 100% blocked and uh, if you don't open that patient may end up dying and the later or uh, the time wasted uh, between the onset of symptoms and opening the artery uh, you are losing the heart muscle which is going to impact all his life and make him disable all if all his life and his symptoms are going to be there all his life because his heart is not going to be able to pump and he is going to have shortness of breath and a lot of other things uh, he may have repeated hospital admissions for heart failure so those are the patients when they come in you need to get to the cath lab get them to the cath lab as soon as possible we call it time is muscle every second counts every minute counts so as soon as you open up the artery uh, the patient who may be dying um, he may be or having severe chest pain like people feel they are like elephant is sitting on their chest once you open their artery they are completely fine without any symptoms uh, and they, they they feel great so that's the where you really make a huge difference in terms of even improving overall mortality or overall death so those are the really patients we should definitely target and every institution should have what we they call this as a primary angioplasty program that means that every heart attack patient is taken to the cath lab and if there is a blockage uh, open it either with angioplasty or if you may so really end up sending them for surgery similarly patient coming in with a acute stroke um, what we call as a brain attack instead of the heart attack their artery in the brain is blocked and not every patient but there are patients if we do properly diagnose them and find out one of the main arteries in the brain is blocked and the patient is not able to move his whole side or not able to talk and we have seen patients if you open up that artery patient will wake up on the table and start talking to you that is really where you make a huge difference and this we do see on uh, often on regular basis what are the technological advancements or innovations in interventional cardiology that have significantly transformed patient care during your career i think there has been a lot of um, I, I, if i i say that out of all the fields in medicine cardiology over last few decades has really advanced um leaps and leaps it's it's uh, really has changed uh the overall uh, arena in interventional cardiology the first one was like drug looting stents opening up the arteries and putting in the stents and uh, over last uh, decade or so it's uh, basically the structural heart interventions and what i what do i mean by structural heart interventions is basically the valve replacements like uh one of the major problem with uh, the valve is the aortic valve which narrows in elderly patients and they had to undergo open heart surgery for that and now we can uh, actually do replace that aortic valve without the open heart surgery by going from the groin it's called the tavi procedure this is one of the major advancements similarly we can do other valves now like mitral valve or if somebody had a surgery in the past uh, replace the valve and now that valve is not functioning if we can go in and we instead of going the, for the surgery again which is going to be very high risk the second surgery we can basically put in a new valve without open heart going from the groin so those are really the major advancements i would say in last decade in in uh, interventional cardiology as we conclude our exploration into interventional cardiologist we extend our gratitude to dr bashir memon for sharing profound insights into a day in the life of an interventional cardiologist